Hey Sawyer, how's it going? Uh, doing something a little different today. We're going to look at some stuff on the stereo microscope. So we're going to take a little walk on the light side for a change instead of using electrons to see. We're going to uh, do a day where we look at random other things. Uh, and yes, these are crinoids. And hello, Volcano Doc and Pacific Plankton. How's everybody doing today? Um, you know, I don't think I have a, a droid cam on for this computer. Um, so it's kind of hard for me to show the microscope that I'm using. Um, yes, we're on the, the light side for a change. And um, I'm actually zoomed out as far as I could possibly zoom out on this microscope. Uh, you can see the top of my head. Uh, oh, thank you for the subscription, Pacific Plankton. 14 months. That's like as long as I've been around. Uh, and hello, Dangling. Hope you guys are having a good weekend. Um, I think I slept in till 11 o'clock today, which almost never happens because usually uh, the little one wakes me up, but um, just sort of slept through all of it. So uh, the sample that I'm looking at is actually uh, just a, this hand sample. Um, which has some giant crinoids on it. And I stole it from Mary's desk, so I'm pretty sure it's Mary's sample. Um, but there's a lot of little crinoids in here. And on both sides of the, the, uh, the rock. And, um, you know, secretly I'm a geologist, but I don't think I've ever done any geology on the stream. So, um... I thought we'd play around a little and look at some things in the stereo microscope that um, are crystalline or um, that have fossils in them or whatever, you know. And then um, somebody had asked if I could put some of the diatom stuff and, uh, well, not diatom stuff, but something that we'd sputter coated on the stereo microscope. So I have um, some materials that we've been looking at recently, like the Sea Star and. Um, Hello, Micah. Um, see, Dangling, he comes to my streams, but uh, he misses your streams. Um, so we'll, we'll look at some stuff. And then I also picked some really colorful things to look at. Maybe dumb question, but have you seen the YouTube videos of crinoids crawling? Um... I've seen the ones where they're eating. I don't think I've ever seen the ones where, you know, like they're kind of like um, waving around, but I don't think I've actually seen them crawling. Um, so crinoids uh, in the modern world, um, I mean, people recognize them. Around here, people call them uh, Indian beads or something like that. Um, but uh, in the modern world, they're you know, sea lilies, they're like, they look like a plant, basically. Um, they're not a, a vascular plant, but, um, but then when they die, they sort of disaggregate into these little tiny Cheerio shaped things that we have in the microscope right now. And, um, and so people sometimes will use them as jewelry or, uh, you know, the, the um, fossils themselves are pretty interesting. Sometimes you can get a whole, um, like a whole series of them stay together and kind of land in place. Um, <laughs> uh, it's the same bearded man who always is on this stream. Um, hello, Sarah. And um, I should be shouting people out, but it's kind of hard because the keyboard's in a weird place. But um, if you're not following like Volcano Doc, then you should be. And oh, and now you start 
shouting people out. Um, and also, oh, how do I not have Volcano Dock as just like a really simple little thing like that? That would have been a good idea. Yeah, there you go. For Pacific Plankton, you can just uh, you can just type pack. That's that's what I do. You're helping your mom. Oh, okay. Um, so, uh, for people who don't know, I'm, I'm actually trained as a geologist, and, um, even though I spend most of my time in the modern world looking at, um, little tiny aquatic organisms that create, uh, fossils, people don't usually think of diatoms as fossils, uh, but they stretch all the way back to the Jurassic, and some of my colleagues work in the Jurassic in marine sediments, and actually, um, uh, and some terrestrial sediments as well, but, uh, but they will look for, um, ancient deposits of diatoms, and, um, I think the oldest stuff I've ever looked at is only about, like, 12 million years old for diatoms, but, um, I think in the Eocene they became a lot more common in, uh, in terrestrial settings, and I just don't work that far back, typically, um, but, uh, the, the really old ones, uh, that, you know, they don't really look a lot like modern diatoms at all, but, uh, but they're still diatoms, at least as far as we can tell, um, stretch back to as early as the Jurassic, and, um, I'm trained as a soft rock geologist for the most part. I have my master's degree in, um, in carbonate depositional environments, so... I thought I might do a little hand sample today, look at some fossils. We could also look at some minerals. I have some, uh, you know, like granite and quartz and stuff here um, that we could look at. But, um, what's the, oh, they don't look anything like the, the, uh, <laughs> the modern diatoms. I can show you some pictures. I don't actually have any of the old uh, diatoms, but um, Dave Harwood is um, one of the sort of premier diatomists that work in the early uh, marine diatom world and um, he's a good friend of mine in fact uh, was you know at my PhD university although he wasn't on my committee because he works with marine centric diatoms um, and trained me in marine centric diatoms I took a class from him and uh, his lab was shared with my advisor Sherry's lab back in the day and so um, her microscopes were on one side of the room and his were on the other, but the students were often, you know, hanging out together in the, in the rooms together. So, um, is this a different part of the lab? It's my other lab. Uh, it's not my office. I have two labs. There's the SEM lab, um, which is where the SEM is. It also has uh, other things in there now. Um, the SEM's in one room, and then like around the corner, um, there's a mercury analyzer that belongs to Dr. Latimer. And, um, and so her students are often back in there looking at stuff on the mercury analyzer. But um, <laughs> um, this is my, uh, my normal lab. The SEM lab is one that was added uh, it used to be a classroom and we converted it into a lab so we could put the SEM in there. Um, but when I first started, the lab that uh, I had was actually where Dr. Winter is now. And then the person who had this lab uh, left the university and then I took over this room. Um, so this has been my lab since, I don't know, 2015 or something. Um, it's just that I don't usually stream from this lab because the uh, SEMs are in the other the other lab and in here we have just the microscopes the light microscopes so um, I've got a sitting beside me a, a microscope like the one that's at home and then uh, this thing back here with the dust cover on it's another microscope my first one uh, in the lab this is actually the third one and then uh, the light microscope that we're looking through is actually over here I can't really like point the camera at it because the camera's built into the screen but um, but it's a stereo microscope. So yeah, I have like a light side lab and a dark side lab, and I'm usually in the dark side with the electrons um, for streaming purposes. But, um, and then 
actually, if you look right, let's see, right here, um, if you're watching my finger and I can figure out where it is, that blue blob back there in the background is actually a Leica um, Primo Star, which is the type of microscope that Pacific Plankton streams from. And I've got two of those. One is here and one is in Dr. Yost's lab. Um, but uh, that's identical, basically, to the one that she has that's back there with the... Sorry, I can figure out where my finger is. That blue cover right there. Um, uh, so I've got sort of five nice microscopes, in, uh, light microscopes in the lab. And then um, we have a classroom that has like a bank of petrology microscopes as well that I have access to. And some of them have a... Uh, um, a thousand, a hundred X objectives, so the ability to actually look at diatoms. Um, <laughs> yeah, my office is a tiny little cement uh, bunker office with no windows, and uh, it's got a sink and a towel dispenser in it. I don't, uh, I don't know. I, I wouldn't stream from in there. I don't, I don't think I've ever done that. Um, but occasionally, I like first semester, I was kind of teaching classes out of it, so. Um, yeah, that's a good question. Um, if Volcano Doc, if you're still here, did you get your microscope um, issue sorted out? I know you were having trouble getting the stop height set, and um, you said you were going to check in with the people at GSA, so I'm assuming you went to GSA to check in. Um, so crinoids are cool and all. Um, they're pretty basic in terms of a fossil, and, um, you know, this one has got a ton of them in it. Um, and not super exciting to look at. It's an internal fix. I have to send it back. It wasn't any Leica rep at the GSA. Oh, okay. I read something that said uh, that the stop for um, for that microscope might be um, set at the factory. So, um, but then some guy was talking about how he had um, had done it, and he'd done it by lowering the stage all the way, and um, and than pushing something, but I don't know what he pushed, so, um, let's see, you can decorate it, what can I decorate? I'm confused, um, hey Mama Bonbon, bon, how's it going? The positive stop is behind the focus knobs, so you gotta take it apart, oh yeah, that's probably better to have a professional do that, um, Volcano Doc, um, hopefully they can get it and get it back to you pretty easily. Oh, my office. Well, my office does have cool stuff in it. It's got some of my photographs and um, uh, some of my SEM images and then like, you know, like awards and whatever, um, books. Um, I decorate it. I guess I decorate this lab a little bit, um, but you can't see it because there's no walls visible to you, just shelves and, uh, and a calib... What is that thing back there for making calibration data? Um, Hopefully soon. Okay, good. Um, well, that's great. Let's uh, let's slap something else on here. I've just been staring at these. I've got these really... Actually, it's got some really beautiful um, crinoids in it. Um, like this really big one. That's my finger for scale right there. That thing's big as my whole hand... Uh, my whole finger. Um, so it's a pretty big uh, crinoid. And actually, you can see... Let's see if I can get it to focus. Not used to things this big on the microscope. Um, so like, we're super zoomed out as far as my microscope is concerned. I'm at the farthest distance I could be. There's something crawling around on the sample down there. You see that? See? People say I only look at dead things, but right there, there's a little bug crawling around on the rock. Um, some kind of little mite. I mean, it is on top of some dead things. I'll give you that. Uh, I'm going to put it back on Mary's desk so she can have the mites over there with her. But, um, let's see. So those are crinoids. And um, as long as we're doing basic, uh, basic fossils, here's some more basic fossils for you. That there is a brachiopod. People often think that they're clams, but it's obviously not a clam. And um, this one's got some 
uh, little coral pieces in it, looks like. And then some more brachiopods. And uh, I think that that is a bryzoan right there. This, I uh, can't remember if you guys can see my mouse in this mode. Hang on. I probably have to switch over to this one. Uh, this structure in here looks like a, it's part of a bryzoan, this whole thing. Hopefully you can see that. <laughs> the university is infested. Well, a good healthy nail. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um... Yeah, I think it's a fenestrate, uh, and you know, if I'm not mistaken, um, this sample, oh yeah, that's really obviously a, a Bryzo one back there, um, that's a, that's a bit of a crinoid with, or not a crinoid, a brachiopod with a, um, fenestrate Bryzoan on it. And um, I think this sample maybe came from sulfur um, or someplace in here in Indiana. Um, we have a lot of limestone. And um, on two weeks from now, is that right? Yeah, two weeks from now, I won't be able to stream because we'll be on a field trip in southern Indiana looking at some... Um, some carbonate stuff from down there for a class that I teach, which is uh, sedimentation and stratigraphy. And um, they have those little Archimedes, uh, the sort of coiled um, bryzoan, fenestrate bryzoan. So um, they're pretty common here in, in Indiana. This is, my best guess is it's probably Mississippian um, or Pennsylvanian. If it was collected from Indiana, that's mostly where we get, uh, mostly what we get. So <laughs> watch for snakes. Um, I've never actually seen a snake down there, believe it or not. Um, but the site that we go to is sort of like a classic, um, a classic geology site and, um, for Indiana. And a lot of times the, um, we're on like a, um, an off-ramp where there's a road cut and like we're on the, uh, I think we always go to the southeast side of it and then like the northwest side of it I sometimes see like the Indiana University geology having a field trip the same weekend on the other cliff um, so it's sort of funny but um, you'll be going with us well you can come along if you'd like um, no the university's not infested with snakes although that would be entertaining um, you know for people who don't like snakes Instead, uh, the university's got a bunch of little mites crawling around on the rocks, apparently. Um, who knows where that thing came from or what it was looking for, but I doubt it's going to find any food on a, um, on a crinoid. All right. Um, so this rock also is pretty, uh, got an intense number of fossils on it. Um, that's a coral and another piece of a brachiopod and so there's a bunch of weird little little fossils on here as well um, let's see if I can get some of them in focus for us aha uh, that's pretty cool there you can see these sort of horn shaped things uh, there's a couple of possible things that could be I don't know how old this material is. Um, <laughs> the magic school bus. Um, we take a little van. And in fact, one of the students is going to be going to Africa and we'll miss the field trip. And so it'll just be like me and um, my co-pilot, uh, Kathy, who's going to be helping me drive. I can drive by myself, but the university requires that I have a second person along. And then, um, and then I think three students. So pretty good ratio for student to teacher in any case. 
uh, where do these samples come from? Uh, these samples came from Mary's desk around the corner. Uh, I just stole some. I was like, oh, look, this has got some cool fossils in it. And um, they're probably from Indiana. Mary's from Indiana. And um, Indiana has a lot of uh, limestone units in it. And I'm actually a little perplexed as to what this uh, thing is that's in the, the center of the screen here, like this guy. Um, it's, it's got a couple of possible options. It could be a straight-shelled nautilus. It could be a type of coral. It actually looks like it's coralline to me, but it doesn't look like any of the corals I've ever seen. Um, and then this over here actually looks like an Archimedes coil right there. Like you're just seeing a transect of it. And so it's possible that it could be something like a, a view of one of the Archimedes coil without some of the fans on it. Always possible. Um, but those are some pretty cool stuff. Those are corals right, uh, right here. That's a coral for sure. And that's a brachiopod in the center there. Oh, that's a really beautiful, uh, let's see, what are they called? Blastoid, I think. This is like a, a type of crinoid with this little flower shape in the middle of it. Um, pretty neat. Uh, yeah, it's a bunch of the same fossils, you know, they just uh, all die in the same place. And then this is a bit of a shell hash. So the fossils aren't um, pristine. And um, that's the hinge for right there. That's a hinge of a brachiopod. Um, so it's just probably a, an old, you know, uh, marine high energy area uh, or just downslope from a lagoon in a, um, on a beach. But there's some cool stuff in here. Um, I'll have to think about what these little uh, sort of triangular spiny things are, pointy things are a little bit. My instinct suggests that they're probably a coil, a coral or a, or a bryzoan. But there's some weird things that sometimes look like that. There's a lot of them which suggest to me that it's probably something like a bryzoan. All right, so there's some cool little fossils. And let's look at some, we can just look at some minerals. Uh, this is a bit of uh, rose quartz. I just grabbed some things that I thought, I think that's what it is. Um, I just grabbed some things that I thought would be nice and colorful because normally on my stream, we don't look at anything colorful. So I thought, oh, I'll just grab the most colorful stuff I can find. Quartz. Um, this one is, I don't know what kind of magical healing properties it has, but um, it's clearly healing me somehow. I'm not sure what this green mineral actually is. It's a, uh, it's got really strong cleavage. Maybe Volcano Doc knows the answer. My mineralogy is probably as rusty as her paleontology is. Um, yeah, it's got some conchoidal fracturing. This one's got cleavage planes. Uh, can I scratch it with my quartz? That's a good question. Uh, it appears to be scratching the quartz. I'm going to say no based on that. I cannot seem to scratch it. So, uh, can you hold it? Yeah, sure. I think you can see that. It's green, but the colors don't look very clear, like in the, you know. I don't know that that's a very good uh, macro view. Should have had my document cam uh, in here because that probably would have been more useful. But it's you know green and shiny. I don't know. 
I don't know that one. I'm not willing to take a guess. This just looks like granite to me. It's got some regular granite. To... Yeah, Amazonite. That's probably it, actually. Um, I need some, one of those like green, blue green um, in that group. Uh, it's starting to get cold there in Texas. Well, bring on the magical healing. I could use a little bit of healing, I guess. Uh, I'm not sure how I can uh, how I can activate it because I don't actually do any crystal healing, of course. But uh, I heard Pacific Plankton's going to become a shaman, so maybe she can figure it out. Um, that's yeah, that's just some granite, right? So. We got plagioclase and uh, quartz in there is the most common aspects of it. Let's see, I can put some more light on it. This one looks like it's phaneritic and uh, almost pigmentite level uh, crystals in there, some very large crystals. <laughs> Turn the rock around three times and call out Bowen. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Bowen might show up and then I would have to explain to them how my students never seem to remember the Bowen's Reaction series um, even though they've been taught it in four separate classes before they get to said strat um, do I follow GeoGym? Uh, I do follow GeoGym I don't think I've ever seen them stream but um, maybe that's because I'm not actually following them. But I think I have them on Twitter and on um, Instagram, too. So, um, that's almost all of my rocks. This is, uh, you know, granite's pretty boring. It's the stuff that people put on their countertops, right? Uh, it's just got uh, quartz. There you can see some quartz very clearly. Um in in the in the corner here some quartz and some plagioclase feldspar and um and that's pretty much it that's some sort of junk on the surface there ignore that gray stuff and then there's some darker minerals in here um in the mix but it's the, uh, traditional granite in my opinion just some large crystals. Kind of nice. Um, I don't know where this one came from because uh, we don't have granite in Indiana um, other than people's countertops and, uh, and um, exotic rock materials that, that get brought in. Um, and then also I found this cool... Uh, I found stuff all over Mary's desk and, and around where her desk used to be. So um, Mary's a geology student, so... Uh, she's probably been on a bunch of field trips and and uh, had opportunities to look at some cool stuff. Uh, I think what I'm going to do one of these days, I keep threatening to do it, is um, try to figure out a way to hook up one of the petrographic microscopes to um, to my camera so I can stream from it onto my laptop. And then um, I can do a little bit of carbonate petrology that way, uh, where we can look at some thin sections. And then we might even put some stuff on the SEM um, that has uh, rocks, but I feel like it's a, a path I haven't even followed at all because I am usually so fixated on just looking at diatoms and doing research. Um, so this is just a geode, um, but the, uh, the outside of it is, I think it's a quartz geode. You can see the outside of it's got like a rounded rough edge and then the inside has those like real cool little growth band. Um, lines that you can see on there. I'm sure this one will provide all kinds of crystal healing for us. Um, but uh, kind of neat to be able to look at. This is kind of a pretty um, little hand sample that she had over there. There's actually just like a wall of rocks around her, her, um, her desk in every direction. So I didn't want to spend the whole stream looking at rocks. Uh, I just thought we would play around with it a little bit, and um, uh, and I thought I would actually 
uh, show some of the stuff that we were looking at in um, uh, on a stream recently. So uh, just so that you can get to see what happens when we sputter coat stuff. So um, everything that goes on to the scanning electron microscope that um, that isn't conductive needs to be made conductive. And the way that we typically do that is put it into the sputter coater, which coats it and deposits a very fine layer of gold on it from a plasma cloud. So um, the little um, gold foil disc that's the target in there has a current that's run through it and then basically um, it creates a little plasma cloud which then deposits the gold on um, whatever's in the chamber. So it's not a lot of gold, um, but if you were just wondering like what's that look like, um, because when I put it into the SEM then you don't actually see any of the color, um, you're only seeing things in black and white. So um, I thought it would be kind of neat to um, <laughs> the blingifier. <laughs> yes, Calathon. I I blingify it. Granted, it's not boring. Well, I mean, for a geologist, I feel like it's pretty interesting. But like um, for the average person, it's just like a pink and pink and white rock. Um, uh, but also, I study soft rocks. So you know, the parts that might be really interesting, the sort of scientist scientific aspects of it that might be really valuable are also not really in my wheelhouse so I will leave those things to Volcano Doc I'll, I'll leave it to experts to talk about that sort of thing instead of uh, having me babble about it um, senselessly so um, this is a blingified uh, sea star that we looked at we looked at the um, outer surface of it and then this is a different sea star this is the inner surface um, the underside of the sea star and um, both of these were collected from the ISU aquarium um, as a invader invader um, that they wanted to get rid of so they just scraped them off of the glass every once in a while and um, and then I don't know what they do to get rid of them but they just get rid of them basically um, and so I said, well, can I have one um, so that I can put it on the scanning electron microscope? And they were like, whatever. So whatever. This is what we got. Um, but this is what it looks like to the, um, to the stereo microscope. Kind of neat. Um, we saw some of the same features, although I feel like the plates were a lot easier to see in the scanning electron microscope than they actually are in the stereo microscope. And that's partly because... Um, there's a depth of field issue going on. Um, you know, we can only get so much of it in focus at the same time because the elevational differences, and that's probably the major handicap of a stereo microscope and in, in using light, which is basically we can't see all of it at once um, in focus. You can see that right now if you look at the um, the like the edges out here are really out of focus if I make this part in focus and then I can kind of get the edges in focus and I lose this thing um, but in the SEM because we're using electrons not light and we're um, often imaging these things from very far away with respect to how electrons see them um, we can actually get a lot greater depth of, of focus this stereo microscope actually has a really cool feature which is um, focus stacking and it actually would allow us to take a picture where we focus through from the very bottom, which is where the, you know, the carbon tape is down here. Um, I could focus through the entire subject up to the top of it like that, and it would stack all of the parts that were in focus together and produce an image that's all in focus at once. But, um, you know, like until we actually took a picture like that, it would be kind of challenging for us to see. So let's go look at just one of the edges around the edge of one of the uh, arms and um, I think this is a strong case honestly for using the scanning electron microscope to take a look at um, to take a look at these things because I feel like you can see stuff but it's kind of confusing what you're looking at um, because so little of it's actually in focus at the same time and then of course I've coated this thing in gold so 
Um, it's also confusing in the sense that like all the surface has got no color and normally we would use the color to help us figure out what we're looking at. So these are the little ossicles um, that surround the outside edge that we saw on the scanning electron microscope images. And really I don't think you can see the plates very well, but um, here's like, here's a plate, here's a plate, right? Echinoderms are made up of a series of overlapping plates like this. They also have a, uh, I think they have sea urchins in that, um, in the aquarium, but I think that they're pets, they're not things they're trying to get rid of. And then um, we can actually take a look at the underside of it as well. So this is here the underside of the same sea star that we were looking at in the scanning electron microscope. Um, so you can see it's blinged out arm, right? Oh, you have no idea what googly eyes mean. Um, well, you paid for points, but I don't actually have googly eyes on my stereo microscope. Um, so I will redeem them for you. And then the next time, um, I will either have them on this microscope or we'll have that on the SCM and then you can, uh, you can spend your googly eyes. But what it does is we put googly eyes on it. It's not money. Yeah. It's, well, it's time money. I mean, you, you're present here in the channel. It's your channel points. So, um, but I can still refund it. Yeah, yeah, it goes right on the image. Um, or I could just download some right now, but I have a feeling that um, my really nice googly eyes are in the other lab. So I could go grab them, you know, if you'd want to see it now. The mustache is also only in the other lab, um, but I can go grab them very easily. It would just require me to run over there with my uh, my USB drive and then I can bring them over. <laughs> what about on me? I've already got a mustache, but you can put it down there if you want, uh, and I could have a second mustache on top of my mustache. But, I mean, mine's attached to the whole face, so, um, you know, it's hard to remove. You're curious. Okay, well, I'll go get them, and then we can put some googly eyes on the sea star and whatever else you want. Um, it'll just be, like, uh, two minutes while I walk to the other lab and dump it onto this drive and then um, and then I'll be right back so you can um, I'll zoom out and then you can kind of look at some of these other or look at the sea star in, uh, in its zoomed out state it's actually kind of cool you can see a little bit more than what we could see in the center part of it um, from the SCM because once it got inside the where the mouth is um, in this area in the middle the SEM couldn't see into this very easily because you know, electrons have a hard time escaping from this cave that we're inside focally right there. So um, anyway, kind of cool. Um, I'll zoom this out. You can stare at the sea star for a couple of seconds and then, uh, you know, just like uh, talk amongst yourself, see how the weather's going and, uh, you know, Um, I don't think I'm going to run to the bathroom, but I will pass by the, um, uh, the other lab, and then I'll be back. So, just to entertain yourselves, you know, um, you guys know how to talk to each other. It'll be fine. And, uh, I think I have to put my mask on because I'm going into the hallway. And there might be people out there, but I doubt it on a Saturday. So... I will be back with googly eyes.
see it went pretty quickly. Just have to, uh, had to run to my other lab. Good thing it's Saturday. <laughs> what the, what's happened here in the channel since I left? Anything exciting? You'll put an explanation of the bear suit guy. Okay. Let's, uh, let's try to make it work. Uh, googly eye. Googly. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, there we go. Now we have one eye. Give me a second. A second eye is going to be required. You know, you can't just have one googly eye unless it's a cyclops. And I feel like that's a special type of googly eye. Um, that would be required for that. Um, but I really like these ones. I feel like I picked I picked nicely. So these ones, there we go. There's a second googly eye. And I feel like one of the advantages of using googly eyes is, um, oops, hang on, is that we can't have them looking exactly the same, same way, right? We've gotta, we're gonna have to rotate this one around like maybe the other way. Just a little, like, there we go. We could, ha we could have it cross-eyed or we could have them like, true googly eyes I think would have to be not quite looking the same way. So we, <laughs> we need at least two eyes. If you're gonna, um, if you're gonna have googly eyes, I feel like you should have at least two. Um, and then what was this uh, tropical geek where you're giving us the googly eye command? You paid for the googly eyes. So you can um, you can choose what to put the googly eyes on and where you think the googly eyes should go. Right now I just place them what I feel like is an ideal location on um, on on the sea star. <laughs> and um, you know like we could zoom in a little. I feel like you could make you could make a case for, uh, oops, I didn't want to move that around. I feel like you could make a case for, uh, for wanting to, um, to make it just more like this, you know, like there's a nose sort of shape and there's a mouth sort of shape right there. <laughs> uh, I feel like that's a good, that's a pretty good location for googly eyes. Let's see. I need to maybe bring the whole the whole sea star down. And then like here. What do you think? Did that satisfy you? That's what's important is um, did it make you feel good? So if it made you feel good, feel good then and you feel like your points were worth it for a sea star to have googly eyes. If you wanted the googly eyes to be on me, for example, you could demand that I wear the googly eyes, and then, oops, and then, uh, and now I've got them on my face, and, uh, and I'm googled. <laughs> this one, uh, came with a free mustache, but... <laughs> You want the mustache as well? Okay. I see how we are. We're all having fun this morning with the googly eyes. I gotta, I gotta keep my head still 
while I type. Uh, which is a challenge. And then, uh, what kind of mustache did you want, Pacific? Because I'm pretty sure that I got a couple. And I think this is the one. Yeah, I know you like the French mustache, right? So uh, we'll go with the French mustache. On on the sea star? Back on the sea star? Let's see. It's got that nose-like structure there. We can make a face out of anything. That's actually an argument that I have, um, is that things look like faces all the time, right? Like, that's just human nature, um, to make things look like, um, like it's a face when we see it, and then we're like, oh, that's definitely a face. This one, you know, right here, that's a, that's the nose, then, uh, and the mouth with the mustache on top of it. Perfect, right? Pretty good. Um, if that was in a, uh, a store and you were traveling and you were like a gold-plated sea star with the googly eyes and mustaches you'd buy it you'd definitely buy that and then you'd give it to somebody and they'd be like what the actual heck is this right and uh, if it was coming to me I probably would appreciate it though I would be like that is quality googly eyed mustached uh, stuff going on right there um, and I would I mean, I like sea stars, so if people just sent me a sea star, I'd probably be happy. But one with googly eyes and a mustache on it, that I feel like that would that would be top shelf, right? That's where grandma keeps the peanut butter right there. All right. Um, so for uh, for it is adorable, isn't it? Okay. Let's see what it would look like on the outside of the uh, sea star. Let's see. We'll just rotate this around, and then like. Monsieur C Star, he wants to know how was your stay at the hotel? Um, like that, right? Totally adorable. And uh, that's quality right there. If you use your channel points in my channel and you put the googly eyes on, then uh, we make it look good and uh, I'm going to mess around with low quality googly eyes or uh, mustache that you might not enjoy. So hopefully this is satisfying. All right, also on, uh, well, that, that's the, there you go, that's the, the entertainment part of the show. Um, so we looked at two C stars, the inside and the outside view. And then we also looked at some mushrooms on, uh, this was the Bolites, Bolites mushroom that we looked at um, on Wednesday. And you can see what it looked like when it got, so the bottom of this thing just kind of was sponge-like. And um, there you can see, we were, we were in one of these things looking around. Uh, and I said, oh, I could kind of get that view in my, in my stereoscope. And this is maximum zoom on my stereoscope. Um, so we saw a view not, not dissimilar to this. I took a picture that was kind of like this, only um, it wasn't in color. And, um, and I actually have a uh, extender for my stereo microscope that would double the size of this image. So I've got a, um, a 2x multiplier that I can put on it. Um, but it's kind of a struggle to get it on there and then I can't use the ring light. So I have to take the ring light off. And I feel like um, I'd rather have it be well lit, I guess, um, for, for what we're looking at. And then uh, if I was trying to get diatoms or something, then we might put this thing on there. But uh, well, for now, we don't need it, I don't think. We'll just suffer with the fact that this is as close as we can get with the stereo microscope right now. And this is 
um, somewhere there's a magnification thing that tells you where we are, but um, that 32x is not the actual magnification, but um, I think the image magnifier. Uh, so there's a, a bit of the underside of that mushroom we were looking at. And um, this is the profile of the gills that we were looking at. We also looked at on, uh, on the stream on Wednesday, right here. So that's just like a transect through the mushroom. Um, and the gills are on the bottom of the cap. And so that's a little bit of the cap and then um, the gills that are hanging down from it. And then um, these are the gills themselves. So we looked at some of the gills. Um, I took one of those slices and I basically just kind of like um, rolled them out so you could see them from the side. But this is what we were looking at <coughs> on, uh, on Wednesday on the SEM. And then just for some reference, uh, we also looked at some diatoms from Pacific Plankton samples, and those stubs are also still on here. And they're at a much higher height, so I need to zoom up. This big circle that you're seeing is um, a little metal cylinder that's aluminum, and diatoms are on there gold-plated um, and dried onto the surface of that. And sometimes people say, oh, can you see diatoms with your naked eye? And I say, no, but you can see them with a the stereo microscope, um, just the big ones, of course. The little ones we can't really see, but all those little circles um, that you can see on there, I think pretty clearly, um, those are actually diatoms. So this is the maximum magnification um, that our stereoscope has and those are probably some of those big cosinodiscus um, diatoms that are on there so and then if there was like a sample that had some of the copepods or whatever else we'd definitely be able to see them with the with the stereo microscope the lines that you're seeing that rings that um, that are on here are actually when they milled the um, aluminum cylinders uh, they ground down the metal that way basically so, um, I think this is what I was asked to do explicitly by, um, I think it was Studio Cornix who wanted me to look at, like, what could we see? Could we see the actual samples with, like, the gold coating on them? And that's them. This is what it looks like. So... Um, I think it's a lot less appealing than in the scanning electron microscope, but not ugly. Just you can't see much of the detail. And uh, in previous streams, we've actually used this uh, device back here, which is the micro manipulator. We could pick these things up and reposition them um, on slides, and we did that a little bit. And I was gonna um, write something out, but. Uh, it's challenging to actually write something um, for a lot of reasons. One, it's pretty easy to break diatoms when you're trying to pick them up. And two, we don't actually have like a pig eyelash, which is what we should be using, right? Thank you for giving Headshot Specialist a shout out, Pacific. And um, then I have some other things. Um, I think I'm just going to do the whole stream from the stereo microscope today. No light microscope, no SEM, uh, just the stereo. And I've got some old... Uh, materials that we've looked at before um, that we can put over here on the um, on the stereo microscope so that you can see them I think that might be enjoyable now I've got to zoom back in because Uh, you can see all the blinged out things. The things that we've blinged. Oh, the things we will bling um, for the SEM. I feel like it would be a great Dr. Seuss knockoff. I'll have to come up with all of the things you can bling um, 
and then we can make a list and I can take the pictures of the things that are blinged and um, and then we can uh, we'll, we'll just yes <laughs> all the things we will bling this is a, uh, a blinged out head of a um, cicada that we looked at on the stereo microscope I think uh, three weeks ago or something like that maybe it was more like a month ago um, three weeks ago when Pacific Plankton was here or was it longer it seems like it was longer um, it seems like it was forever ago but uh, have I done any bird watching streams I haven't done any actually uh, it does look a little bit like a horseshoe crab uh, it's just the head though like I chopped I decapitated a cicada and then we stuck it in the um, it was dead already yeah, it's got its look at its body over here too, um, but uh, it it had ants crawling through it. You know, it was gone. But um, I cut off the head plate basically, and then we just put that on there. So it's like its little proboscis, uh, you know, mouth parts, and the grill on the front of the um, the front of the cicada there, and uh, and then it's two eyes on the side so it's a compound eyes and we can actually do a bit of zooming in on some of this stuff so we're super zoomed out of course and I feel like we could probably get a good image of the compound eyes there you can see them and I'm going to put the lights on it it's totally blinged out compound eyes. And you can see the little facets of the eyes themselves, right? Um, <laughs> like the front end of an old car, right? <laughs> um, yeah, it's this is the compound eye of, um, of a cicada. And this is a dog day cicada, what they call dog day cicadas. They're the ones that show up towards the end of the summer. And around here, they're common. Um, I usually have them climbing up the wall of my garage um, on really busy years. The whole garage is just covered with them because our garage is brick. And um, I think they like to climb on the brick because it's easy to grip. Um, so they just climb up the side of the brick and then they molt and, uh, and shed their skin, turn into the winged cicadas because most of the time they're underground as beetles and um, and so I was actually going to try to get a time lapse of one of them molting one of these days but it, uh, there weren't that many this year um, I think because the um, brood X cicada whatever thing happened earlier in the year so <laughs> I think it wants to rub that thing on its eye uh, I have a, uh, a tiny little probe I could use, but I think, um, we'll just leave it on there because otherwise I might accidentally crush it or I could try to just blow it off. Yeah, there you go. I just dusted it with my, uh, my mouth air cannon. There you go. And, uh, we can actually look right down on this little... There's, it's got little sensors that come out of its face, so we're kind of just looking right down on the top of one of those. Um, we can kind of see into the little chemo sensors that come off of it. So there it's coming out of its face like a mustache it already had. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> hair cannon. <laughs> yes, a hair cannon. Uh, and here we can zoom in on the little grilly bit. By itself, I think it looks a little bit like a trilobite. Uh, just like sitting there, a hairy trilobite, but nonetheless, it looks a bit like a trilobite. Um, that's just the little grill part, its mouth grill um, on this part. And then uh, I think we actually looked at the, uh, on the top of their head, they have these ocelli, which are the, um, the three little eyes. They have three little eyes that are light sensor eyes. Let's see if I can, you know, I'm used to just having the machine do everything. So this positioning things by hand nonsense is, you know, 
ridiculous. Okay, so there we can see the, uh, normally I have people for, for touching things, you know, I don't want to have to touch them myself. Uh, <laughs> uh, machine people. So there's one of the um, eyes. So all, well not all, actually not all insects are this way, but a lot of the flying insects like flies and bees and locusts and grasshoppers and whatever, um, they have uh, three little eyes in the center of their heads that, um, that are used for light and for orientation. So they can tell which way the sun is and then they can fly towards or away from things. Um, based on the light. So it gives them a sense of direction and, uh, and they use that for navigation mostly. And then the eyes that are on the side, the compound eyes are used for motion. So, you know, they can basically gauge things, but they're, you know, they're wired pretty differently than we are because it's thousands of little facets on their compound eyes. And then these big eyes are really simple. Um, usually they're red. And on these cicada, I'm pretty sure they are still red, um, but I think that they're used mostly for detecting light. So, yeah. The eyes between its eyes, yes. Lizards have three eyes. You mean lizards have three eyes because one of them is a sensor eye that's like on their head, and then they have their regular eyes that they use for seeing? Because I mean, technically insects have thousands of eyes, but like they have one, a pair of compound eyes on on the outside edges, right? And then they have these little tiny ones that are in the center of their heads. So we're we're zoomed in here on it in the middle. Um, and then just for clarity, I think we also took the we looked at a white-faced hornet when um, when we were looking through things when Pacific was here. So these are some of those samples. And let me get this into focus for us. It looks pretty good in there, but it doesn't look quite as good on the camera. Uh, maybe, I, maybe I'm over brightened a bit. Hang on. Let's see if I can fix this. Brightness. do it kind of manually if I use these uh, I guess I could take them off completely and we could just use the ring light um, then we don't get so much of the glare and you can see there um, the hornet's head and um, these are the mouths they have sort of like a you know like one folds under and one folds on sort of on the outer edge and then this is sort of like um, their compound eyes here. These are obviously antenna. And then there's three little eyes right here on these as well. The same three eyes. Uh, functionally, the same purpose is served by those three eyes as the three eyes on the, the locust, the cicada. So I might need to put some light on that in order for us to see those eyes. I think you can really see the uh, compound eyes on the hornet quite well right now. Yeah. Those look pretty good. And, um, and then the three little eyes that they use for light are here. They have light sensing parietal eyes on the top of their heads. Do they have three eyes on the top of their heads? Or do they have just like one light sensor and then the, the normal eyeballs that we're used to, to thinking of? So, you can actually still see a bit of the real color um, on this thing, which is kind of cool. So even though it's been plated with gold, blinged out, um, so you can hopefully see the three eyes are here. 
those are their light sensors. Um, but you can still see a bit of the yellow or white. I guess this was a white-faced hornet, so this is the white part um, in the center of their head here, which I think is kind of neat. And their faces are composed of really interesting little plates. And then this was a wing from the same hornet. Also, I didn't kill this hornet, although somebody might have wanted me to. see if we can look at some of these wing veins. Those are kind of neat. As a texture. I feel like the gold plating might actually help the wings a little bit because normally they're transparent or translucent and so um, it's kind of hard to see some of the details. So here we can at least see um, some of those details a little bit better. And then I don't know if we even got around to looking at some of these other things that are on this set of stubs. Um, this was the white-faced hornet. This was uh, another wasp that we sort of bumbled into while I was looking for them. And the three little eyes on this one are really pronounced. Also, this one looks like it's got a bit of a kind of a cool sideburn thing going on, you know, on the side of its jaws here. Um, we can very clearly see the jaws, and uh, as with the other one, the, uh, the three eyes that they use for navigation, and then uh, the compound eyes that they use for movement, and then here's the antenna coming off, and then the, this is the mouth, the mandibles right here, and then little sideburn things I was sort of talking about. Kind of cool. Yeah, we didn't look at them all. Um, I think we just sort of ran out of time because we, you know, we're trying to do like a thousand things while you were here. And then there's even another one on here that we didn't look at. Oh, maybe it's that one. There's some... Uh, <laughs> some of the actual rocks. We can go back looking at the geology a bit. These are some of the minerals from the beach. Uh, some sand grains from the beach sample. Um, yeah, just sand. And um, these are gold plated, so it might actually be better if I got some of the original material and we could look at it without the gold plating on it. Um, I still have it, I just didn't bring it over to this lab. Sorry, that's a cable that was driving me crazy. It's sort of blocking me. I'll try to get the color to be more like the actual color. Um, but, you know, even with the gold plating, these are, they still have, uh, you can tell it's quartz in some of the cases, and some of the minerals are visible. Um, I thought I saw some sort of like mica. Not the mica that's in the chat, but, or was in the chat, but, and I think I always see some um, chlorite whenever, some pieces of chlorite whenever uh, Pacific Plankton shows her minerals and they're not gold coated. And I think we also saw some magnetite um, in this SEM image, but I don't remember which one of these is the magnetite. And because it's dark and opaque, it probably is the stuff that looks like just like nuggets of gold, nuggets of gold in there. <laughs> so, um, and then we looked at some snake skin. So we still have those pieces of snake skin. This was um, the gold sputter coated snake skin. Um, from the snake that molted. Uh, and then this was the inside view and this was the outside view, I believe, of that same, you know, we Pacific very carefully rearranged these to like have an inside and outside view visible of the same um, specimen. Um, and then we also looked at 
This is the molt of the snake's head with its eye right there. So another piece of the snake skin that we sort of looked at under the skin anyway, electron microscope in an earlier stream. The little eye plates. Now you can kind of make out that it's a snake. If I zoom out, you can see its eye. And then it was this like an inside view of its eye and an outside view of its eye, I think, that Pacific did. Okay. Well, so just it's totally random today. We're looking at whatever goes under the microscope. Um, and uh, I guess while we're at it, we could look at this thing. Hang on a second. I need to put it on a pedestal. There we go. That's a... Uh, a blinged out dragonfly head from uh, a really old stream that I did. We just still have the dragonfly's head around, gold plated, sitting in the lab. So there you can see um, their jaws are, or their mandibles are basically below their chin uh, if you want to humanize them. And then um, they have all these sort of sensors around uh, above that sort of rostrum or beak or front face that they have right here. None of those have moving parts on them. Um, and then uh, the compound eyes are really big and around the outside edge. And then they also have three little eyes that are way up on the top of the head that we can't see. But um, this one's completely blinged out um, with gold and then we occasionally look at this still which is the wing of the dragonfly and sometimes I'll put it back in when people are around like science night when we have the public come by and look at stuff sometimes I'll put the dragonfly head and its wing back in so we've had this on the um, the SEM for public consumption before for people to just kind of come in and try to give them some objects of things that, that you know, if I just show them diatoms, they'll be like, I don't know what this is. Um, so I try to give them some things that are a little bit more common um, that they might recognize. Okay, so I also made a little pile of things. I was walking around outside looking for things that were colorful that we could put into the um, stereo microscope before we call it a day. And let's see. This is a bit of lichen, which I thought might be really nice to look at. Um, this is, I think, sunburst lichen. It's like a bright yellow lichen. It just grows on the trees around here. And we sometimes look at the lichen, and this exact lichen, actually, um, in the SEM. I mean, not the specimen, but from the same tree, and it's the same material. So. A lot of times people don't realize their sidewalks are covered with lichen. It's basically everywhere, on rocks and on trees. Um, all over the place. That This one's a really pretty one. It's got this sort of bright yellow and red color. And I think there's four main types of lichen and it's based on the shape of the, the body. These ones are, I don't remember what they are. It starts with an F. Fruit, fruit, fruit toad. There's a little bug in there. Uh, see, we do look at living stuff. Yeah, it's such a bright color. But I think it's really pretty. I think the sidewalks have a lot of lichen on them, just like little bits of it, and people don't realize it until you start to look really closely at the sidewalk. I would take a piece of the sidewalk and put it under the microscope, but it um, turns out the university frowns on me out there with my rock hammer smashing the sidewalk. So, oh, there's a little mite. There he is. He came crawling in and out of our field of view. He's like, why is it so bright in here all of a sudden? the surface of the tree bark from underneath it that the stuff is living on, which can be quite 
you know, there's some bugs out there. There you go. Get a sense of it, at least. So it's kind of nice to be able to look at things that are kind of bright colors. It's um, a bit different for us. Let's see, let's stay with that motif and we'll look at some This is uh just some flowers. I went out and sort of grabbed some like flowers from around campus. And we've also looked at flowers on the SEM, of course. Um, they can be way more complicated than they appear when you first sort of like are glancing at them. I mean, if you were outside and you saw this flower, you'd be like, oh, it's just a yellow flower. But the center parts are pretty complicated often. That's kind of neat. And you can see it's sort of red and green. These sort of spiny little coverings over the red parts, which are surprisingly hairy. <laughs> and uh, We've looked at some of the petals before, very closely in the scanning electron microscope. We got down to the sort of cellular level, and we're looking at individual cells. I don't think we can get quite that close on this thing. Well, I guess we can kind of see them. Hang on. Just barely see the cells. Um, which we could see pretty clearly in the SEM, but they were also a little shriveled. So, there's the, the petals. Just making a pile of stuff that we've gone through. There we go. Everything starts out as a blob that I have to get into focus. Everything's at a different height. Some cool little purple flowers. I do a lot of um, a lot of macro photography. So for me, this is sort of the way that I often see flowers, um, which is super zoomed in for most people. But there we're looking inside. There we go. We're looking inside the, um, you know, where the sexy bits are on the flower. And we'll come out to the actual petals and just focus. We can focus to the point where we can see the petals. But see right there, that's sort of hairy bits. is super reflective as well so like when I try to to get it in focus I'm also having to fight the fact that there's a glare from the uh, fiber optic lights <laughs> little hairy bits so um, just sort of playing around with some different things in the um, in the light microscope, in the stereo microscope, I mean. So let's look at, um, let's see, there's a little, uh, this is some sort of mum, right? I'm not my, my flowers aren't that good. I store all of my information about what kind of flower is this in my wife's brain, so. But I think these are mums. Some sort of chrysanthemum. And 
I suspect those are actually little pollen grains that we can see down in there, the little specks that are on it. Um, let's go take a look at them, see if we can find it. Yes. So, the surfaces look like they're a little, um, they're wet or something, but those are, I think those are actually the pollen grains themselves. So, I was hoping we'd be able to get to see some of this. Some little bits of pollen, not super red. Keep trying to click on this like I think it's the actual. There we go. A bit better. Not so glary, but you can see the, uh, the pollen grains that are attached to it. So the flowers make their bright colors and uh, and sugar and. Uh, trick poor unsuspecting insects into carrying their pollen around for them from one plant to another and uh, that's how they multiply so that's kind of cool there you can see we were zoomed in on the Pollen bits, can nice pretty colors. Something bright for the uh, for the light, for the few times when we come over to the light side. This is a little daisy. I think we've also looked at this on the scanning electron microscope before. Not this individual, but the same type of little pink and yellow daisy. And it looks brighter and less pink with the lights on it, but you can see a bit of the natural color there. And again, if we zoom in, I think always the center parts of flowers, they're way more complicated than they appear. see that sort of yellow um, furry components and again I think those little specks that you can see on them the little bright yellow areas are probably actually pollen grains yeah there's some really light bright colors in here I think those are the actual pollen grains there's one there's one there's one there's not a lot but there's some in here just sort of covering over the actual anthers and um, these ones have sort of like a, a, a white colored structure around the edge that's a little bit different than the sort of yellowy stuff that's in here and the actual petals are kind of like a pinky purple very light pinky purple Kind of see on the back sides of them as well. These little hairs sticking off of them. Which you probably weren't looking at when you looked at the flower, but maybe you will from now on. And all the way down the stems, little hairs. Kind of cool. Just one more little flower. Let's see if I can fold back some of it so we can see the uh, sexy bits. The flowers, sexy bits, I mean. Yeah, that's a really pretty shot. You can kind of see um, 
again the bright yellow stuff that's on there is the pollen and as I mentioned we have looked at the pollen like specifically in the SEM on those little anthers and let's just zoom in and take a look at some of those because I think they're kind of neat looking see the actual little pollen grains. If you're somebody who's allergic in the fall to plant pollen, I apologize for putting you through that. It's been a fun morning, but you got some revisions to work on. Yeah, okay, that's cool. Thanks for hanging out, uh, Volcano Doc. We've just been sort of browsing around at stuff in the light microscope, of course. So pretty casual Saturday morning, uh, trying not to uh, overwhelm people with diatom images all the time. But um, if you're not following Volcano Doc, then you definitely should. She's working on getting uh, her microscope fixed, and then she'll be looking at stuff, I think, pretty regularly once she's done with her um, dissertation uh, on streams, where she actually does microscope streams. So that'll be cool. So if you're interested in, um, in having somebody teach you about minerals that are volcanic in nature, um, then uh, you should give her a follow. Diatoms are awesome. Yeah, I agree. But I think, um, you know, sometimes people want something with a little bit more color and maybe something they could actually like understand a bit better. I don't know. Everybody knows what pollen is. It's the stuff that makes you sneeze, the stuff that bees collect. move around. Um, it's also fun just to have like a pretty casual like, you know, let's just look at some cool stuff kind of a stream like this. And if I was being a good photographer, always with the lighting, right? Always trying to get the lighting right. Yeah, casual streaming, not my normal hard science. Sort of approach. All right. Is that pretty? I think that's pretty. It's a nice photo. Would make a nice photo. It actually, um, I always say this, but it actually looks just a little bit better in the um, in the microscope than it does for you guys. But I think that's still pretty nice. All right. Um, I don't know how long have I been streaming. Hour and a half. So that seems like a good time to stop. Um, if I can find somebody to uh, to chase down and uh, and to raid, that would probably be good. Let's see who's out there. no friends that are on really um, except for Rand's Reef and Marley's um, who's doing travel and outdoor so I guess we could raid her oh it says it's for mature audiences maybe I shouldn't uh, Rand's Reef it is it's a very low um, volume of people on um Sometime this, uh, thank you for all the follows, by the way. Um, I appreciate people following so that you can catch us when we stream. Normally I stream from a scanning electron microscope. Um, today we were looking at stuff in the stereo microscope. And as I mentioned, I'm going to try to get one of the petrographic scopes hooked up so that we can actually look at those um, on occasion. Um, but, uh, but for today, I think we'll, we'll call it a day. And then um, I've been working on some um, calendars. So if you're interested in diatom or SEM based calendars, um, I don't know if that link still works, but I can 
throw it out there and see. We'll just follow it. Yeah, it's the same store, so I think it will work. Um, so if you wanted to have a bunch of artsy calendars, I guess there's also that mug I made uh, there. There's a, options there for 20 bucks, and of the 20 bucks, $1.75 comes to my lab. Um, and then I just donate it to um, students in my lab to do student research. So if you wanted to support student research, that's one way that you could do it. Also, I've been adding some stuff to the, um, the Redbubble site, which uh, Pacific Plankton um, posted a link to right there. So I've been slowly adding some uh, new content to it in terms of um, SEM images and uh, sorry, the background's a little out of place and um, art artified SEM images and uh, and I'm working on some new actual drawings. So um, we'll probably have some new drawings up there as well by the time. I don't know, the end of the month rolls around, maybe beginning of November. Um, and I might try to get some of those, some more up basically um, relatively soon. And then uh, those should be cool. And um, what else am I doing? I guess I'm describing species in my spare time, you know, doing my normal thing. Um, uh, I think that um, Studio Cornix, who's been hanging out on the streams here and also in Pacific Plankton streams a little bit, is going to be shipping me some stuff soon. And Pacific Plankton's going to be shipping me some stuff soon. So we'll have those probably by Wednesday that we can put on to the SEM um, for one of the two. And then we'll probably actually have um, Studio on. We'll see. Uh, you were just going to order a bunch of stickers. Oh, well, that's cool. Um, and then I think that's most of the things that I have going on right now. So I'm going to try to take it easy today. And then tomorrow I'm going to try to work on a paper that I've been working on all week, uh, a little bit at a time. And um, right. Uh, but what, we should have some potentially some interview slash SEM time coming up here with the uh, with studio. And then maybe we'll also do some of the stuff from the stereoscope her with her as well we'll see um when is your when is your uh your thing with uh super good labs pacific um that was probably super loud i woke everyone up though uh also my mouse is backwards. 26th. Oh, okay. Swell. Is it going to be something everybody can watch, or is it just for them? Mm -hmm. You may stream during the day. Do you mean today day, or do you mean, like, the day of the stream? Um, all right, well, if you're not following Pacific Plankton, then um, that's it. You can't be friends with me anymore. Um, you should definitely give her a follow. Oh, on the 26th, okay. And um, let's see, we had some, uh, I think we looked at some pretty cool stuff. Got some geology sort of mixed in. We got follows from Mac Jr., Intrepid Razor, Evuist. Ev and uh, Krista Rose XO and Scriber. Uh, we got a subscription from Pacific Plankton. Resubscribed for 14 months. And then uh, we had a little googly eye and mustachio event in the middle of today as well. So that's nice. All right. Uh, well, I'm going to send you off to Rams Reef and you can, uh, you can watch the shrimp and his fish move around. And maybe he's there, maybe he's not. We'll, we'll never know. All right. Uh, thanks for tuning in, everybody. And we'll see you probably on Wednesday. <laughs>